Welcome to our lecture online. Now we can actually work out an example of how to find the general equation, not just the general equation, but the actual equation of an overdamped case when we're given some initial conditions and we know the values for the resistance, the inductor, and the capacitor. So we're given that the initial voltage when time equals zero is 5 volts, that's the voltage across the capacitor. We're given that the current through the inductor at t equals zero is equal to zero. We're given the value for the resistance, the inductance, and the capacitance. So now we're trying to find the voltage as a function of time. And of course, we're dealing with an overdamped example. We were told this is an overdamped example. The resistance is relatively small, but how do we know? Well, there's different ways of checking it. We can verify that by realizing that the inductance is larger than 4 r squared times the capacitance. If it is, we definitely are dealing with an overdamped case. So let's try that. So the, so the inductance should be greater than 4 times the resistance, 1.923 squared, times the capacitance, 0 0.01. It's 10 millifarads. So let's calculate that. <clears throat> so 4 times 1.923 squared times 0 0.01 equals, and sure enough, the inductance being 1 Henry is indeed larger than 0 0.1479, so that checks out. We can also verify that by realizing that alpha is greater than omega sub naught, and we need to calculate them anyway, so might as well calculate that. Alpha is equal to 1 over 2RC, which is 1 over 2 times 1.923 times 1 over, oh, we don't need the 1 anymore, we already have a 1 up there, and C is 0 0.01. So notice that would be 2 times 1.923 times 0 0.01, take the inverse of that, and that gives us 26. So alpha is equal to 26. And then we can find omega sub naught, which is equal to 1 over the square root of L times C, which is 1 over the square root of 1 times 0 0.01. And let's see here, that would be, uh, well, let's uh, 0 0.01, uh, take the square root, that's 0 0.1, inverse, yeah, that was equal to 10. So in this case, realize that alpha is greater than omega sub naught, which means that, yes, indeed, we have an overdamped case. 26 is indeed larger than 10. So those are the two ways in which you can guarantee or verify that you're dealing with an overdamped case. All right, now that means we need to find the two solutions for S for the characteristic equation because we need S1 and S2. So let's do S1. S1 is equal to minus alpha, so that's minus alpha. Alpha is 26, so it's minus 26 plus the square root of 26 squared minus 10 squared. All right, what is that equal to? 26 squared minus 100 equals, take the square root of that, 24, so we get minus 26 plus 24, which is equal to minus 2. S2 is equal to minus 26 minus the square root of 26 squared minus 10 squared, which is minus 26 minus 24, which is minus 50. So now we have the two values for our characteristic equation, which means we can plug them in here. That means the equation for the voltage as a function of time is equal to A1 times E to the minus 2T plus A2 e to the minus 50t. And now we still have to find the values for a1 and a2. All right, we are given that the initial voltage when time equals zero is equal to five. And so when t equals zero, that means that would be equal to five. So v at zero is equal to a1. Now e to the zero power is equal to one. So a1 plus a2. And we were told that was equal to five volts. So uh, let me write it like this. 5 equals A1 plus A2. All right. Now we need to find the initial condition for the derivative of the voltage. Hmm. Let's do that. All right. So if this is V, if this is V, what is dV dt? dV dt is going to be equal to minus 2a1 e to the minus 2t and minus 50a2 
e to the minus 50 t. That's the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. And we also know that the dv dt, when v is equal to 0, is equal to the negative of the original voltage across the capacitor plus the resistance times the initial current divided by r times c. So we can calculate what that value is equal to. So this is equal to minus the original voltage, which is 5, plus the resistance, 1.932, times the initial current, which is equal to 0, so that's times 0, like this, divided by R times C, which is 1.932, times C, which is 0 0.01. All right, so this part goes to 0, so this is equal to... Okay, we have 5 divided by 0 0.01 divided by 1.923 equals, it looks like it's equal to minus 260. So that's the, the initial condition of the derivative with respect to time of the voltage. So that means that here we can say that dv dt when v is equal to 0. So we can say that dv dt when the voltage is equal to 0, which is equal to minus 260, is equal to minus 2A1 minus 50A2. This is an A. It's supposed to be an A. Because e to the minus 2T and e to the minus 50T go to become equal to 1 when T is equal to 0. We can plug that in here, and we can write that minus 260 is equal to minus 2A1 minus 50 a2. And now we have two equations and two unknowns we, we could solve simultaneously. If I multiply the top equation by 2, I end up with 10 is equal to 2a1 plus 2a2. When you combine these two combined together, the a1s drop out, we end up at minus 250 is equal to minus 48a2. And so therefore a2 is equal to minus 250 divided by minus 48, which is equal to 250 divided by 48 is equal to 5.208. And since A1 is equal to 5 minus A2, so A1 is equal to 5 minus A2, which is equal to 5 minus 5.208, which is equal to A1 equal to minus 5 Oh, minus 0 0.208. 0 0.208. So now we have found A2, and we have found A1, and now we can go ahead and plug that into our equation. Well, which equation? This equation right here. Now that we found A1 and A2, so now we can write that the voltage as a function of time is equal to A1, and A1 is equal to, should be a minus minus 0 0.2 because it's bigger than that so minus 0 0.208 times e to the minus 2t and then a2 is a positive plus 5.208 e to the minus 50t and that should be a 5 here 50t and so here we are there is the final solution it tells us the voltage across the capacitor, which of course the voltage across the inductor or the voltage across the resistance because they're all in parallel. The voltage across each, any one of the three components equals this equation right here as a function of time. And that is how it's done. Let's see if it's correct. Uh, it looks like it's correct. All right.